yeah, thank you very much. And thanks to the organizers for having me speak here. Uh, to be honest, I have to admit, I was really looking forward to uh, visiting Vienna. On the other hand, I'm very happy that despite all the circumstances, we're able to uh, get together in cyberspace. Um, so, well, let's get into it. The, uh, so this is a joint work with Chris Brav and well, so part of what I want to explain is some higher structures that arise from um, Hochschild invariance, which is a, some of this is kind of a classical story and, you know, kind of some new perspectives and applications of some of these ideas. Uh, so let me remind you, um, so the call is suppose that we have a, oops, uh, suppose uh, Z is a two-dimensional, uh, I guess I'll call it TCFT. Another name for it is an oriented TQFT. Uh, TQFT. Uh, so in this case, uh, the, you know, the way this works is to every one and at least one and two manifold, you, you assign something. So the, uh, you assign, so, so uh, anyway, the, the reason for, for this conformal is, well, I'm thinking of uh, the values are going to be chain complexes rather than just vector spaces. So whatever I assign to the circle, uh, so it's some chain complex. Uh, so it has some structures. So first structure is that there's an action of the circle group on it just by loop rotation. So that just comes from the automorphisms of the circle. And, but also it has the structure uh, of an E2 algebra. Well, because it's, uh, because it's, uh, uh, you know, looking at these kinds of pictures. You look at puncture, what happens to punctured spheres and these give operations and these exactly assemble into an E2 algebra. In fact, it's a little bit better because the field theory is oriented. So in fact, it's what's called a framed E2 algebra. This will become important uh, in a minute. But so uh, a consequence of such a thing uh, due to Ezra Getzler uh, is that in this situation, uh, if you take the uh, homotopy circle covariance, this is an algebra over another operand called the gravity operand. It's an algebra. The gravity operand. In some sense, this is the definition of the gravity operand, but uh, well, it has various descriptions, the, the nicest of which uh, certainly has to do with moduli spaces of uh, genus zero uh, curves. But um, so, but there's a piece of the gravity operad, which is the shifted Lie operad. You know, so the way the gravity operad works is that there's kind of infinitely many binary operations of various degrees. And the first one of these is a Lie bracket. So in particular, if you take uh, this guy and shifted by one, this is a Lie algebra. So maybe I'll make a comment now that since this is a conference on higher structures, when I say words like Lie algebra, this will mean appropriately up to homotopy. So you can, uh, so really what I have in my mind is that there's some infinity category around more concretely, you can think of it as either DG Lie algebra or an L infinity algebra. In an appropriate sense, all of these notions are equivalent. Um, so this, so so this this guy is a so there's a there's a Lie algebra that you can construct uh, out of a two-dimensional conformal field theory this way. And so uh, part of uh, part of part of what uh, we're interested in is kind of understanding this Lie algebra in a slightly different way. Uh, so uh, at least in in the example, so so an important source of uh, two-dimensional. Uh, uh, sorry, Nick, I have a very short question. Yes. Uh, so, so how is it, you, you, you say in conformal field theory and you say in chain complexes, does it mean that your conformal field theory is kind of supersymmetric or what? what oh, so, so just, I, just, I, I, mean what, I mean what I think people call topological conformal field theory. 
Okay. So, uh, so it, it is, it is uh, some kind of, it has some kind of BRST symmetry or something. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe it would, I don't know. In another language, it's what's called an oriented topological quantum field theory. Uh, that's just a little bit longer. Yeah. So it's, 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 in, a, in, every, in any reasonable sense, it's topological, not just conformal. Uh, uh, so, so, so an important source of these things is uh, Calabi-Yau algebras. I'll say something about what those are. Algebras. And more generally, more generally, Calabi-Yau categories. So I'll remind you what that is in a second. But uh, again, maybe let me comment. Algebras will mean infinity algebras and categories. Uh, well, by categories, I'll mean something a little bit more specific. Um, so there are something like DG categories uh, or A infinity categories. So the important thing is that the morphism spaces have some kind of a linear structure to them. And you know, there are various models for these and nothing I say depends on uh, which, which model uh, one takes. So the theorem here, uh, due to Kevin Costello, is that if C is a calabi category, uh, there's a, there is a 2D TCFT with um, the value in the circle, let's call it Z sub C, uh, the Hochschild chain, whoops, Hochschild chains on, on the category. Uh, so I hope the notation is not too confusing. I don't mean Hochschild homology. I really mean Hochschild chains. The reason I don't write something like HC is because HC will stand for cyclic chains. Uh, uh, so there is this kind of important fact that anytime you have a calabi category, you get such a two-dimensional field theory. So let me briefly say something about what kind of thing a calabi category is. And there are two versions. So two kinds of calabi Yau categories. So I won't, uh, it'll be, so one is what's called proper. So if, um, so let me just say what it means in the case that it's uh, modules over some algebra, then so A is proper. So A is proper. if it is finite dimensional. So in this context, finite dimensional means perfect. So perfect as a, there's some underlying field, let's say that we're working over, uh, which shortly will be assumed to be characteristic zero, but and so it's uh, finite, it's perfect as a, as a chain complex. Uh, and in this case, a calabi structure uh, is an identification of uh, uh, of dimension, so calabi structures, I should say, come with the dimension, um, is an identification of the shift uh, of a shift of A with the dual of A, the linear dual of A. So this is as as bi modules. Uh, so which is which is which is cyclically symmetric. Uh, and one way of formulating what this means. So, well, this is kind of a trivialization of the Serre functor. And there's a, a subtlety here of uh, this kind of cyclic symmetry that you have to also uh, take into account. So this is really, so a calabi structure in this setting is a class in, uh, in the cyclic cohomology. C shifted by minus n. So remember, cyclic cohomology is uh, just 
equivariant map is, well, it's the dual of cyclic homology. Let me say it like this. Uh, so such a thing uh, automatically gives, so such a thing forgets to a map between uh, a shifted by n and a dual, and the, there's a non-degeneracy condition that this is an isomorphism. So I won't say anything about, anything else about proper Calabi Yau. Uh, I just wanted to. So this is kind of the usual notion of Calabi Yau that's maybe more familiar, where you have a Serre functor and it induces a duality on if you in the category on home spaces or or some kind of a um, symmetric pairing on A. But maybe a slightly less familiar, which will be which is the one that I want to talk about, is a smooth and in the case of the case of A modules. Uh, this is the following kind of thing. Uh, this is the condition that A is perfect as a bimodule, is perfect as a bimodule. This is what it means to be smooth. And then the, in this case, the Calabi Yau structure uh, is, is an identification of, well, now this uh, dualizing bimodule. So this is the dual as a bimodule with a shifted by minus n, also kind of in the same way cyclically invariant. So this can be formulated as, as a class in negative cyclic homology. Shifted by minus n. So let me remind you that negative cyclic homology, let me say some words about these Hochschild invariants. So we have Hochschild homology, a category, I hope that's familiar. Uh, so that comes with a circle action. And uh, so the negative cyclic homology is the homotopy fixed points, cyclic homology is the homotopy covariance, and uh, well, cyclic homology is the dual of cyclic homology. Uh, so, okay, so this is uh, just a brief uh, reminder. So in terms of TQFTs, in terms of TCFT, so let me just say what this means. So proper means that there is at least um, there's at least one incoming component. And smooth means that there is at least one outgoing component. So this kind of, um, so here uh, in the proper case, uh, this kind of thing is not allowed. And in the smooth case, sort of the dual thing is not allowed. So the cup and the cap are uh, disallowed. So you know you have to restrict a little bit of what you mean by a topological field theory. So all the kind of operations they have to have at least in in, uh, in the proper case at least one incoming component, and in the smooth case at least one uh, uh, outgoing component. Uh, um, yeah, so in particular, so uh, maybe maybe another thing I should mention is I cheated a little bit. There's an N, there's a dimension to the Calabi Yau, and really the kind of TCFT that it defines is not, is an, kind of an anomalous one. So you're going to see some shifts, some cohomological shifts, and that's the reason for it, but it's not, it's not so important. Um, so, uh, so, so, so I want to, for various reasons, I want to I want to restrict to the smooth case. So so examples. Just so one is if X is an oriented uh, compact um, unmanifold, and then take the algebra to be chains on the base loop space of X. Then this is a smooth Calabi-Yau algebra. So manifestly, it's not—it's 
pretty much always not proper because this is not finite dimensional. We have infinitely many homologies of the of the base loop space. So the um, in this case, let me just tell you what happens. So the so the Hochschild homology, or the Hochschild chains, is uh, is chains on the free loop space of X here. Uh, I guess in order for this to be true, I have to assume that X is uh, connected. And uh, the cyclic homology, similarly, this is, uh, well, the S1 equivariant homology of the loop space. And the, so the Lie algebra starts. So this, uh, in this situation, uh, so, so this is, uh, by what I said above, uh, <clears throat> 2 minus n shifted. Uh, Lie algebra. So sorry. Uh, so before I said that. Uh, so this is circle invariance of Hochschild homology. Uh, so there's some subtlety about the dimension that there's a degree shift that happens. Uh, but it's it's a statement that I that I that I mentioned before that if you take the value on the circle, um, here uh, the value on the circle you should really think of as Hochschild cohomology to get the E2 algebra structure and there's a shift of n uh, between. Uh, Hochschild homology and Hochschild cohomology in this Kalabi Yau case. And so the circle coinvariance is just, well, a shift of cyclic homology. And so it's this shift. And so by uh, the shift is one minus n. And so if you if you add one to that, by what I said before, well, that's a gravity algebra. And if you add one to that, that's in particular a Lie algebra. So this is from the topological quantum field theory point of view. This is where this is where that structure comes from. Uh, maybe let me say this is a consequence. So in in manifold topology, this has a name. So this is the Chas Sullivan uh, string Lie algebra. Um, uh, and in the case, so in the case case that X is a surface okay. surface uh, so so n equals two so that's a particularly nice example because two minus two is zero and so this is just a Lie algebra so uh, uh, well hc so let me just say the chain the s1 equivariant chains in the base loop space is a Lie algebra and so the zero, so h zero, uh, this is just a, this is just the vector space on um, so vector space, so free module on conjugacy classes, classes in uh, in the fundamental group of X. So I mean it's just just free loops, it's just the connected components of the free loop space so in particular. So this uh, specializes to the uh, Goldman Lie algebra. Specializes, so it gives. Um, so here what's special is that the Lie bracket is of cohomological degree one. So in particular, it restricts to a Lie algebra in H zero. And so this is the, this is the, the Goldman Lie algebra. So well, people are familiar. So the way Goldman Lie algebra works for a surface is that it's it's exactly spanned by uh, by free uh, by free loops in it, and there's an explicit for geometric formula for the Lie bracket, which is appropriately looking at intersection points and doing surgery on the uh, on the loops. And uh, the the assertion here is that the, in this example, this kind of algebraic construction recovers exactly this geometric. Um, this geometric um, Lie algebra. So okay, so this is uh, so th so that's one example. Is this uh, for uh, a second uh, example? Is that is it's literally a generalization of the first one, uh, which is that if uh, M is a uh, Liouville uh, manifold, 
uh, than the wrapped Fukaya category uh, of M it, uh, has a, is a smooth Colabiel category. So the construction of the Colabiel structure here is due to Ganatra. Uh, and so in particular, uh, so the Hochschild homology of this is what's called symplectic homology. And so this, um, this discussion in particular means that symplectic homology has this kind of structure of the, of the rep Fukaya category. Uh, and well, maybe looking at this, it won't be surprising to learn, and this is where the word smooth comes from, is that if X is a smooth Calabiao variety, uh, of dimension N, then if you look at the Category direct category of coherent sheaves on X. This is a smooth Calabi, smooth D Calabi L category. Uh, this is where the name comes from, and this is kind of what uh, mirror symmetry suggests as well. Uh, so we'll return to uh, these uh, examples shortly. Uh, so, any questions so far? Nick, can you remind us how you get the, um, the one back from two? Oh, oh, yeah. The way you get one back from two is you apply this to the, is you take M to be the cotangent bundle of, the, of your manifold. Uh, with the, you have to do more than that, the, right, if you want to get the algebra out of the category. Oh, uh, no. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not. I see what you mean. I mean, so the... Uh, so I'm not interested in the algebra. I mean, I only said algebra for concreteness. I'm really interested in the category. But to answer the question that you asked, the way you get the algebra back is that you look at the Fukaya category of the cotangent bundle. There's a canonical element here, which is just for any, which is a cotangent fiber. And endomorphisms of the cotangent fiber is, uh, is going to be your, the algebra. That, you had a different description of this category in the case of the cotangent bundle. Uh, no, I mean this is the, I mean this is the computation that shows, uh, due to Abuzaid that shows that the uh, Fukaya category is uh, identified with modules over this algebra. Okay, thanks. Sure. Um, all right, so, so, so we have these examples. Uh, I'm not, I just uh, mentioned the Fukai example because I think it's interesting. I'm not going to say anything more about that, but I will say something about the other two cases. Uh, so, but before I do, let me introduce another, another object, uh, another higher structure relating to these things. Uh, so now given a category, C, uh, there's a, so Toen uh, and Vake, whoops, yeah. uh, define a derived stack, M sub C, uh, the moduli of objects. of C, so, I don't want to go, go into what a derived stack is exactly or what, well, let me just say that um, this is for the physics audience. So one way I would encourage you to think about derived geometry is that it's, some, it's, it's a sort of vast generalization of um, graded uh, super geometry, really where you have a lot of differential in some sense and it's an enhancement of that idea. Uh, so whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Um, so uh, let me tell you some features about this, this space. So if C is modules over an algebra, then this modulized space parameterizes uh, finite dimensional representations of A. Um, so in particular, inside here, there's something you might call, well, the derived uh, uh, is, is a locus where you look at kind of n-dimensional representations of A. Uh, 
So this is, uh, at least in the case of an algebra, this is something that makes sense. And so this is a, this is a derived stack, uh, the underlying classical stack. So if A is an ordinary algebra, uh, this might still be derived, but the, every derived stack has an underlying stack, uh, just like every supermanifold has an underlying manifold. And this one is the one that exactly parameterizes undimensional representations, right? So you can kind of imagine if you have generators and relations party, you can write down some equations of what it means for something to be an n-dimensional module. Um, so uh, there, can I can I ask something? The db chi x is that really what you bent? Uh, I, I thought that this uh, was a smooth, uh, very generally for any um, any variety, the bounded coherent. Uh, oh yes, but I wanted to say Calabi-Yau, and so uh, I mean. It is true that db co for any variety is a smooth category. That's true. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know. To say Calabi Yao is, I didn't want to get into what that might mean when x is not smooth. OK. Uh, I mean, you, you still need to restrict uh, some. You know, it needs to be Gorenstein, and you need to have a trivialization of the canonical bundle. But uh, this is not. Uh, this is not going to appear in what I want to say. Uh, and also, I could have taken perf. So what maybe you're observing is that perf, there's another thing called perf. And in the case of smooth varieties, those agree. Uh, uh, all right. So, so we have this guy. And maybe I should say that this guy sits inside here. Uh, this inclusion is uh, what's called formally at all. Uh, well. At this level of generality, that's what it is. Um, under some finiteness conditions, it's much better. Uh, but this is all we'll need. I mean, in particular, this will mean that um, anything we say about, for the purposes of this talk, the fact that this inclusion is formally at home will mean that anything we say about the moduli space of objects, we can restrict to this um, more concrete object. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to say is that if I have is if I have a point here, so the way, one feature of derived stacks is that points have uh, tangent spaces, and tangent spaces are uh, themselves chain complexes. So the, the tangent space at this point is, well, our home, well, in C from E to E, uh, shifted by one. So this has a very uh, one uh, advantage of looking at derived things rather than ordinary things here is that the tangent the, it has a well controlled um, tangent the tangent spaces you can describe very explicitly like so um, all right so so what's the what's what's the relevance well first of all so this is just for an arbitrary well dg category let's say or an infinity category so a theorem of brav and dickerhoff is that if C is a smooth uh, and Calabi-Yau category, then this um, C has a natural uh, 2 minus n shifted symplectic structure. Uh, so it's like, well, it's, you should think of this as a refinement of an odd symplectic structure in super geometry. So here, everything is graded. So rather than saying odd, the, you, you name the degree. And so this is where the symplectic structure of degree two minus n. And degree means cohomological degree. Um, so more specifically, there's a notion of what a closed two form is. So uh, it's a closed two form of cohomological degree two minus n. Uh, which is non-degenerate in an appropriate sense. Uh, I don't want to say anything more about that, other than that, in particular, this implies, uh, if you look at the space of functions, uh, so this is functions, is uh, a 2 minus n, Shifted Lie algebra. So 
So this is a um, this has the structure of a of a, of a Lie algebra. So great. So now this is uh, this is what I wanted to say about this moduli space of objects. There is such a thing, and we'll see some interesting examples in a minute. Uh, but now I can formulate the uh, the key result here. So the so the main thing we prove is let me say it first a little bit vaguely, and then I'll elaborate on. Um, so there's a natural map. Uh, of uh, Lie algebras uh, from HC. Okay. Oh, whoops. So C is an N labial smooth category. Sorry. Same same setup. Uh, that there's a natural map of Lie algebras. Uh, so remember, in this case, I said that. HC two, uh, two minus n. Uh, whoops, did I ever say that? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I I did not. But so in this case, by the discussion, so as I said, so you would expect without this um, without this uh, optocomological shift, you would expect that well, there's a field theory. So the, what it assigns to a circle is Hochschild homology. The homotopy Co-invariance of that is by definition cyclic homology. So you expect that to be a gravity algebra. So shift by one, uh, except there's an extra shift of one minus n uh, here because of the dimension of the uh, Calabi-Yau structure. So so in this case, this is this is the thing that's the Lie algebra. That's what the field theory um, formalism outputs. And so this maps to uh, well. I'll, Functions on this moduli space of objects also shifted. So both of these are um, shifted. Well, uh, both of these are Lie algebras, and so there's there's a natural map of Lie algebras like this. So in the case, the case that C is equal to the chains on the loop space of um, um, sigma. So sigma is a surface. So n equals two, uh, this uh, enhances uh, Goldman's theorem. So let me remind you, Goldman's theorem says that you can look at the character variety of a surface. Um, so, well, let's say uh, for let's say in, in type A for GLN. So by what I said over here. Well, some version of the of the character variety is uh, is a, is is a substack of this whole moduli space of objects. In particular, you know, there's a this restriction map is a map of Lie algebras. So this uh, this Brad Dickerhoff uh, shifted symplectic structure on it and uh, refines or restricts to Goldman's symplectic structure uh, on the uh, on the character variety and. Um, well, in particular, this, the, the shifts go away. Uh, on, and if you look at HC0, this is exactly the Goldman Lie algebra of loops on the surface. And so Goldman's theorem says that the, when you evaluate, when you look at trace of holonomy, uh, then that map is a map of Lie algebras, which is sort of surprising because the, the way that the Lie structure is defined on the two sides is completely different. One just purely topologically and the other doing some um, you know, from some algebra geometric construction. Um, Nick? Yes. Uh, does your theorem say something about whatever the surjectivity of the map? No. Okay. Uh, no. And I mean, it's sort of, it's not, it's definitely not surjective. Okay. Uh, so for instance, I mean, for a kind of a stupid reason, uh, here's the stupid reason, is that this moduli space has infinitely many connected components. So there's one, you know, pick a dimension and it's got, a component uh, for the, for that. So I mean, I think what's reasonable to expect is that either for a connected component it's uh, surjective, or maybe stably so. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Sure. Um, so the um, so I wanted to in the remaining ten minutes, I wanted to say something about how. Well, maybe a little bit more about what this map is. I guess 
I should say that in the case that C is an algebra, what this really is kind of, and you think of MC as parameterizing finite dimensional representations. Well, in particular, an algebra maps to its cyclic homology. And so the way this evaluates on an element of the algebra is you just take the trace of that element acting on the, on the module. So this, this really is a map you expect. I don't want to more carefully write it down because that would require introducing some other things. Instead, I want to uh, describe a kind of different, a slightly different approach, which automatically guarantees that this is a map of Lie algebras. Uh, so uh, I want to do that. And then I want to give another example of a totally different flavor of how this kind of construction is useful, uh, namely in the theory of uh, Hitchin systems. So the, so the idea is to interpret Uh, the Lie algebras as Lie algebras of some of groups of automorphisms. So let me um, let me say a little bit more of what I mean by this. So there's this is part of this kind of general deformation theory philosophy that moduli problems are governed by Lie algebras and well. Uh, deformations are kind of closely related to automorphisms, the classifying spaces of automorphisms. So, uh, for instance, pr more precisely, in characteristic zero, there's an equivalence between Lie algebras and formal groups, appropriately understood. And so, the idea is to kind of interpret what the formal groups are, rather than looking at the um, Lie algebras. This will be easier. So, uh, maybe let me state a folklore theorem first. So uh, this goes back to Gerstenhaber's original work uh, on deformations of algebras. And you know the most precise version of this was formulated by uh, Lurie, uh, is that if C is a category, uh, category, again, in this kind of linear sense, then uh, the Lie algebra of automorphisms of the category this is identified with uh, now Hochschild cohomology um, shifted by one. So this is the uh, so this is kind of going to be the base. We're going to kind of bootstrap from from this kind of statement. Uh, and so the theorem that we prove is that if C is a smooth and Calabi-Yau category, then, well, one is, well, you can study, um, a natural thing to study is not just automorphisms of the category, but automorphisms of it as a Calabi-Yau category. So then the Lie algebra of automorph of Calabi-Yau, let me say automorphisms of C, then this naturally identifies with uh, uh, the, well, it's a shift of the negative cyclic homology. So that's not quite, that's not quite it, one minus D. Uh, and so we wanted to identify cyclic homology, but this was the first step towards it. Uh, so that kind of Calabi automorphisms with the Lie algebra of it is given by this uh, negative cyclic homology Lie algebra. But better is that uh, we have exact calabi automorphisms is cyclic homology. So this has an interpretation. So let me say, there's an extra shift here. Uh, so this is exact calabi automorphisms. Uh, so let me let me say what this is, is that, um, so remember that a calabi structure is a class in HC minus of C shifted by, um, shifted by, oops, I keep, so those Ds should be Ns, shifted by N.
minus n, I think. Um, so in particular, this maps to, uh, so HC minus maps to all sorts of things, but in particular, it maps to periodic cyclic homology, also with the same shift. Um, and so uh, rigidity of HP means that we can consider, so let's call this map brackets, uh, consider automorphisms of this pair, C and theta, which fix uh, the corresponding HP class. So this is what I mean by um, exact Calabi automorphisms. Uh, and so this is exactly, so the, the Lie algebra of this, um, of this group is exactly the cyclic homology. Uh, so now, uh, the point is that Calabi automorphisms, so this is a kind of a slight enhancement, a more functorial version of the, of the theorem that uh, Chris and Toby proved, uh, of, uh, of C gives some plectomorphisms of the moduli space of objects and exact Calabi automorphisms uh, give um, Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian symplectomorphisms. And this is, uh, and this is a more conceptual explanation of where this map comes from. Namely, that the, we interpret this um, cyclic homology Lie algebra as the Lie algebra of the group of exact Calabi automorphisms of the category. And just by appropriate functoriality of this construction, it induces, um, it acts on the moduli space by, via Hamiltonian symplectomorphisms, and the Lie algebra of such is exactly functions. Um, so this and is kind of. Like, the, um, I'm a little bit confused here. So you, you, you're fixing theta. You're not fixing theta by the Calabi automorphisms already. No, a Calabi automorphism is an automorphism. So a Calabi automorphism is an automorphism of C of C together with an automorphism, an isomorphism with of theta with um, the pullback of theta. Uh, that's what a Calabi Yau automorphism is. Now, fixing the HP class means that when you, you have this automorphism between theta and the pullback of theta, uh, the automorphism is infinitesimal, remember? And when you pass to HP, because of rigidity, you a priori know for a different reason that theta and pullback of theta are isomorphic. That's what rigidity tells you. And exactness identifies you're given isomorphism, it's image in HP with the canonical one coming from rigidity. Does that make sense? Uh, when you say an isomorphism of elements of cyclic cohomology, you mean a, you mean a, a, a homotopy? A homotopy, yes. Precisely. Okay, and then finally, uh, you know, normally exact is a subset, I guess, of uh, of everything. But but here I didn't think. No, that the, he, you know, no, it's not a subset. The map is no. going in the other way. Right? But no, no, there's no. The map goes from no. The, there's a map from exact automorphisms to automor to Calabi automorphisms without exact, but it's not in, in any way injective. Yeah, but I mean, if, and geometrically, this is the case, right? I mean, the Hamiltonian vector field maps they map injectively. That's right. But, but, but I would have thought the map goes the other way. Doesn't the map usually go from negative cyclic to cyclic homology? There's a shift. Notice that there's a shift by one. It's the transfer map. So the map oh, from okay. cyclic, notice there's a cohomological shift. So there's a fiber sequence which goes from HC to HC minus to HP. And the HC, the first term is with a shift by one. And this is, that that forgetful map is is that one. I see. These are the shifts that give you a Lie structure. Then it's a different yeah. shift for the negative than for the right. We were exactly. only talking about the regular one before the ordinary one before. I uh, I'm not sure what you mean by the ordinary one. But you, were, you were only talking about quote unquote ordinary cyclic homology having a Lie structure before. 
Well, no, I mean, the shift is due to the dimension of the Calabiao. So that's what's like, to really have an oriented TQFT, you needed to have the N to be zero. No, I'm, I'm talking about the difference between the, the HC oh. minus and the HC. You didn't talk about oh. HC minus having a- No, I didn't, no, I didn't mention HC minus before. Uh, uh, there's kind of also a TQFT reason why that should have a Lie algebra structure. Uh, and in fact, that also has a gravity structure. Uh, let me, uh, sorry, there was one other thing I wanted to say. Let me take another minute, uh, is I wanted to do the following example, uh, which is to take my, to take my categories, to take, uh, to take, a, so let X be a Riemann surface. by which I will mean a smooth proper algebraic curve. And so let's see, take db co of the cotangent bundle. Um, so this is a smooth uh, two Calabi-L uh, category. Uh, so, MC is a uh, is this Higgs space Higgs of X. So this is the moduli space explicitly. It's a perfect complex on X together with a map. Uh, we'll call it theta from E to E tensor omega one. So it's perfect complexes with a Higgs field. Uh, here, of course, live Higgs vector bundles as a substack of this. And the point is that, well, by what we said, there's a map. So D is two, so there are no shifts. Uh, so there's a map of Lie algebras. Like this, but now let me, but now by what I just said, HCFC is interpreted as the Lie algebra of automorphisms of C. So this is kind of exact automorphisms, LBL, automorphisms of C. But because of what C is, uh, there's a subgroup here. There's a very, it turns out that there's a very natural subgroup here, um, which, is, uh, which is the Picard group of T star X, which is the same as the Picard group of X. Uh, well, let me say it like this, Picard of T star X. So an automorphism of the category of sheaves, one automorphism is you can tensor by line bundles. Uh, well, uh, and so one feature of, of the of tensoring by line bundles of, of the Picard group is that it's commutative. In particular, it's Lie algebra uh, is commutative. And the observation is that the, this Lie algebra of Picard, uh, this is, uh, well, let me call R gamma, T star X. Say. So this is functions on T star X shifted by uh, one. So, so the zero of cohomology of this, this is exactly, well, actually by ser duality, let me, let me write it right away with ser duality. So this is a sum of I bigger than or equal to one of H zero of X omega X tensor N. So it's this space. So this, there, there's this, there's this, so it's a commutative Lie algebra. H zero of it is the space. So this is a commutative algebra on this space. And we're saying that each element here gives a, gives a function on this moduli space of Higgs bundles. So these are exactly the Hitchin Hamiltonians. And in particular, this gives a conceptual finite dimensional proof of why Hitchin's Hamiltonians commute. Uh, so this is a kind of a reinterpretation of where uh, the Hitchin system comes from. And it kind of gives a chain level enhancement to Hitchin's integrable system. All right, I'm a few minutes past my time, so I'll stop here. Thank you.